Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a quick buttonhole tutorial for you and I will be using a buttonhole foot for my machine as well as doing it with a regular stitching foot. So I'm just gonna be working with some cotton fabric here which I have added a layer of interfacing for this stability. I have a button here and so I've used the button and I just made a few lines going slightly over the length of the button to mark out the length of the buttonholes that I'll be making today. So going to my machine, I'm first going to take off my regular presser foot and I'm gonna be switching this out with my buttonhole foot. Now mine specifically looks like this and it's got two pieces. So for now, the top piece is what we're gonna look at and you can see that there's this little slider area here and this is gonna help size out our button so our machine knows how big to make the buttonhole. So I'm gonna take my button that I'm gonna be using, I'm going to place it here in the opening and then I will slide back the slider to measure out my button. Now you don't have to press this super firm, it's just pretty much measuring it. So you can leave this here like so. If you're using a button that has a shank, that's perfectly fine as well. So what you do is you basically lay the flat side of your shank down and then from here you can measure it the same exact way. So it's great for any kind of button that you're gonna be using. So I'm just gonna replace my example button. Now the bottom piece is just this little steel plate here and I'm gonna slide this into the slot on the side. So now I have this sort of two layer thing going on and your fabric pretty much goes in between these two. I'm going to attach my buttonhole foot to my machine And you can see I can raise the top half, top half moves, and that's fine. The last thing I need to do on my machine specifically is I'm going to lower this little lever here all the way down. And that pretty much helps the machine move the foot around as well. So now my foot is all set up. So going to my machine options, I'm going to select my buttonhole. From here I can play with the different widths and lengths of my stitches and you can definitely do the same depending on how you want your buttonhole to look. It's highlighted right now because these are the recommended settings but if I definitely want to do a smaller width or a shorter stitch length or a longer stitch length I can definitely do that here. But for now I will go ahead and leave these as they are at the recommended stitching settings. So now I'm good to go and we can go ahead and start stitching our buttonholes. So on the top of my foot here I have a little hole that's marked with red lines and I want to line up the first point of my mark in between these lines. So I'm just going to take a second to line it up and then you lower your presser foot and I'm just going to step on my sewing pedal and it's gonna sew all on its own. So I'm not holding the fabric, I'm not putting any pressure on the fabric or moving it around. It's basically set and the machine is doing it all on its own. And it will stop as soon as it's done. I'm gonna cut my threads and then you can see I have a buttonhole. So this is a very basic standard buttonhole. So I'm gonna go ahead and make another buttonhole now. So while I'm lining up at the red marks, I am also lining up the line between that center opening at the bottom to make sure that it is straight. So when I specifically do my buttonholes, I like to go over them twice. So I'm gonna start by making my first round of a buttonhole. And I'm gonna wait till this finishes. Then I will cut my threads, lift my foot, place it right back down. I slightly adjust just in case it moves. I try to make it back as the way it was. And then I will re-go over the same buttonhole. And this will give me a really sturdy and a little bulkier of a buttonhole, which I really like personally. So you can definitely see the differences here with how much more thicker and secure it is. 
going over it twice. And that is basically how you can do the automatic buttonhole on your machine, assuming your machine is similar to mine. And here is how you do a buttonhole with a regular sewing foot. So I'm going to start with a basic straight stitch and I'm gonna go just slightly to the left of the line that I marked. And I'm gonna sew from the top to the bottom point of my mark. Then I'm gonna do another one, same exact thing on the right side, slightly off of my mark. And I wanna try my best to line up my start and end points. So now that I have my straight stitches in, I'm gonna go back to my machine and I'm going to select a zigzag stitch. Now you will have to play around with these as well, depending on how you want your buttonhole to look, but I'm going to be setting mine at a very small width and a almost very small stitch length. And this gives me almost the same exact look that my machine already does. So I'm going to line up over my left line first and I wanna make my zigzag stitch right over the top of my straight stitch, making sure the straight stitch is in the middle. And I'm gonna sew once again at the top of it all the way down to the bottom of the line. I will do the same thing on the right side stay stitch. So just take your time making sure that you're sewing down straight. So now you have your two sides. Now that I have these two lines, I'm gonna go back to my settings and I'm gonna set the width of my zigzag stitch between a three and a five just depending how far apart you stitched your lines at. But you want the ends of the zigzag to meet the outside edges of the lines you've made. So I'm gonna line it up and then I'm just gonna stitch about five stitches and then I will do a reverse stitch for five stitches along the top edge. And I am going five stitches onto my smaller lines. Then I'll go to the bottom and I'll do the same thing starting inside of the zigzag lines, working my way to the bottom edge of the zigzag lines, doing my five backward stitches again as well. Then I'll just clip off all my extra threads and you basically have made your buttonhole. This does take quite a bit of practice to get consistency. As you can see, I definitely need to practice more myself doing it on my own without my machine, but I just enjoy the quickness that the machine provides. So the way to open your buttonholes, you're gonna take a seam ripper and I'm gonna pierce right into the center of the buttonhole where the fabric is showing. And I'm just gonna open this a tiny bit and then I will go back and use a very small set of sharp scissors and I will finish cutting straight up to the inside of my edge stitchings. Then you can go ahead and clean up any fabric threads that are coming undone and then you can also do fray check to keep any of this from shredding apart that you can't clip off with your scissors. You can always do it with a seam ripper all the way across, but you definitely wanna take your time doing it so you don't accidentally cut into those end threads or cut past them for that matter. But this is your basic buttonhole. So you can see the differences. It's definitely something that you'll wanna play with, but it's a good technique to know since buttonholes are usually pretty common when you're making garments, I mean, anything really, pillows, uh, things like that. So I hope this was a very helpful tutorial. If you're interested in any of my other sewing basic tutorials, I have them in a playlist, but otherwise I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.